Forty years ago this week, Ninoy Aquino was assassinated. Even from the first hour, Filipinos knew that something truly history-changing had happened. In the arrival statement he had prepared, Aquino spoke of tested friends and most valued political mentors. Among them were Senators Lorenzo Tanyada, Francisco Soc Rodrigo, and Jose K. Pepe Jocno. These men were heroes of the anti-dictatorship struggle. As we mark the 40th anniversary of the assassination, I would like to know who was Aquino in the eyes of his fellow heroes. On the question of whether to return to the Philippines or not, what was their advice to Ninoy? And how did they fight the dictator? Good evening. I'm John Neri, and you are in the public square. Unfortunately, these legendary senators are no longer with us. Diokno passed away in 1987, Tanyada in 1992, Rodrigo in 1998. But we invited their children or grandchildren who followed in their path to share what they remember of those tumultuous days and their father's or their grandfather's legacy. Maria Socorro Kuki Diokno is a daughter of Capepe Diokno and is longtime secretary general of the Free Legal Assistance Group her father co-founded. She joins us via Zoom. Hello, Cookie. Hi, good evening. Thank you very much for having me. Attorney Francisco King Rodrigo is the eldest son and namesake of Soc Rodrigo. Like his father, he is a legal luminary. And attorney Lorenzo Erin Taniada III is the grandson of Katani. He also entered public service, serving in Congress and in party politics. They join me in the studio. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, John. So thank you, Cookie, King, and Erin for joining us in the public square. My first question is for all of you. King first, and then Cookie, and then Erin. Where were you when you heard that Ninoy had been assassinated? I was in uh, New Jersey. Uh, I was then a political detainee. Mm -hmm. I sought political asylum in 1979. Mm -hmm after I was detained here in 1978. Okay, so you were in the States when you heard the news? Yes. Uh, Cookie, where were you when you heard the news? I was at Ali Mall with my <laughs> son and my uh, two of my sisters, mm -hmm. and uh, we were just hanging out there, and all of a sudden someone made an announcement on the public announcement system. Oh, I did not know so, that. Uh, Aquino has been shot, Aquino has been shot. So I hurriedly um, looked for my, you know, I had my son with me, so I looked for my sisters, and I said, we have to go. We have to go. There's, this is bad. We have to go. So we rushed home, mm -hmm. um, and by the time we got home, Dad had stayed home, mm -hmm. uh, Dad, someone had called Dad. I'm not sure who had called Dad. Mm -hmm. And then later on, uh, the lawyers who had been at the uh, airport, um, who were there to greet him, all went to uh, the house. This is in 3rd Street, mm -hmm. and they met with Dad. I just wanted to point out that uh, August 21, 1983 was a Sunday. Yes. Uh, people were out uh, on that day. And Erin, where were you? I was in the airport with uh, children uh, of the political opposition. Mm -hmm. uh, we were organizing uh, to welcome Center Nina. The closest we got to the airport was a gate uh, where vehicles passed. Okay. So we were there uh, before 12, and then uh, the, the order for the day is once he arrives safely, mm -hmm. we would proceed to Baclaran for the, for the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Mass, mass. Mm -hmm. and then most probably go back to Time Street. So that was the, the sequence that happened. So we were here. I'll have follow-up questions for all of you. Uh, Attorney King, uh, what, was, what was it like in the States? What was the mood like? Uh, what were the headlines uh, like after the assassination? I'll tell you, uh, that incident was known all over the States. Even our parish priest in the little town that I was staying in mm -hmm. came to me and asked about the incident. I, I remember my mother-in-law was there and... Uh, about two days after the assassination, we were at Macy's. 
And probably the sales lady figured us as Filipinos. Okay. So she told my mother-in-law, my goodness, you're Filipinos. That's a hot place to be in these days. <laughs> Sabi ng mother ko, in loco. Yes, that's why I'm buying cotton panties. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yes, it was well publicized in the United States. But the good thing is it rallied the Filipinos. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a catalyst to have Phil Ams realize that we did not have a benevolent dictator at mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. We had a uh, ferocious dangerous, cruel mm-hmm. dictatorship in the Philippines at that time. Unfortunately, about a week after the assassination, the Korean Airlines uh, flight was shut down, apparently by mistake, by Soviet forces. And that pushed off the Aquino assassination news from yeah. the international headlines. Erin, uh, you were at the airport. Did you hear the gunshots? Uh, what was it like when the word spread? It, it was, well, when we were in the airport, because of festive mood, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because we, the people were gathered at the driveway mm-hmm. and then towards uh, the gate where vehicles were allowed to pass. Mm-hmm. The problem is we, we did not hear the gunshots because it was at the farther end, if you know the mm-hmm. way the Terminal, terminal 1 mm-hmm. uh, are, mm-hmm. is made, mm-hmm. uh, there are three gateway gates mm-hmm. no That's right. uh, boarding ramps mm-hmm. they were in the farther ramp okay and the gate i was mentioning is right in the front mm-hmm. you know? so we didn't get to hear any shots uh, as a matter of fact when we were told that uh, we would now proceed to baclaran mm-hmm. uh, we all thought that there was no incident that happened in the airport it oh. was when we arrived in baclaran that we were told that uh, he was shot. Would you remember who made an announcement? It... I cannot recall right now. I mm-hmm. think it was whoever was heading the caravan mm-hmm. towards the McLaren Church. All right. Kuki, um, so immediately after, people started trekking to Time Street where the body was uh, being waked. Uh, but that was later. That was uh, later in the evening. Later and in the evening, If yes. I recall correctly, okay, um, Senator Tanyada, that is Lorenzo Catani, Erin's uh, mm-hmm. uh, Lolo, mm-hmm. was with Doña Aurora um, Aquino, mm-hmm. and they were there to meet um, Senator Aquino. Mm-hmm. And then there was the problem where they didn't know where uh, Senator Aquino's body brought. was brought to. Yes, that's right. So that was a big issue there. And I remember, because I, was, I had rushed home already by then, mm-hmm. that is when the lawyers were, were calling and, and meeting with that. What do we do? Where do we go? Uh, how do we find the, the body? Around, I would think, 6, 7 in the evening. It was mm-hmm. quite dark mm-hmm. when um, my dad and my mom went to Times. Mm-hmm. And they again met, they met with Doña Aurora and with Senator uh, Tanyada at that time. People started to go up to times around five. Mm-hmm. Not, it wasn't, you know, in immediate. Um, in Ali Mall, when the announcement was made, people stopped. Everybody stopped what they were doing. They, we just stood still. Mm-hmm. And there was a, a feeling of shock. What? What's that? What again? Again? You know, did this happen? Mm-hmm. And so it, I think that was the initial reaction from the outside. Was that yeah. shock? First of all, that that, that uh, anecdote about the public address system being used in Ali Mall. That's that's really new to me. That struck me. You know, I mean, it it could not have been an like a premeditated thing, right? I mean. I guess people were just so shocked that they decided to, to share the news. But I wanted to ask you about the wakes. Uh, what was it like? So uh, starting on Sunday evening, people uh, went to uh, Time Street. And then after a few days, it had to be moved to Santo Domingo Church because there were just so many people. Um, what was it like? Uh, my, I, again, I could be wrong, okay? Sure. My understanding is that they couldn't find the church. Mm-hmm beginning mm-hmm. to move his body to eventually they were able to make arrangements with Santo Domingo mm-hmm. um, I, what was it like well 
pun mo na tao, you could you could hardly move. The lines were so so long. Mm-hmm. Um, you could see people from all walks of life. It it didn't it, not only the you know the the middle class or the rich, but also the poor. They were there. You would have um, priests, nuns, and you know it. I talagang puno siya. And then um, when I went to the funeral mass. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could hardly move, and I, you know, of course, because I was with my dad, mm-hmm. we we kind of had a place mm-hmm. set aside for us, mm-hmm. so we were able to go there. And um, actually, when I was in the 40th anniversary, I was really sad because all that entered my head was seeing his coffin in on the on top of the steps. I, you know, I it just brought it back very very clearly to me. Mm-hmm. What had happened, when it had happened, how it happened, and and you cannot imagine the the, the people. I don't I don't know if you know this, but four days after um, Senator Aquino was assassinated, mm-hmm. uh, the all the political groups, the first major groups, mm-hmm. got together mm-hmm. and they formed Chaja. That's right. That's justice for Aquino, justice for all. That's right. Um, and that's the first umbrella group, which included everyone but everyone, which was quite difficult, you know. Yeah. Well, let's say opposition politics then and opposition politics <laughs> now aren't that all that different. <laughs> so, uh, all the, you know, all the diffi- difficulties. So th- that's the first major, and it was formed four days. So by August twenty-five, there was already cha cha. So I think that contributed to the uh, crowds that were also mobilized to go to the wake, the funeral, and the funeral march. That's right. I think the moving spirits were Kapebe, uh, Jokno, uh, and Katani. But uh, I do remember, I represented uh, Ateneo in the first few meetings of Jaja. We would meet in the RVM uh, house on N. Domingo, and it was the great Lino Broca who served us a very formidable chair. <laughs> he got things moving. No? Uh, that was my first time to meet him. Um, I hope we have time later to talk about the funeral, which is the largest yeah. in our history and one of the largest in the world. No? Um, but let's go back in time a bit. In his arrival statement, Nino said he had come home against the advice mm-hmm. of so many, even his own mother. What do you know of your own father's advice to Ninoy about returning home? So I'll, I'll ask yeah. each of this, or, or your grandfather, yeah. mm-hmm. in your case, Erino. So, uh, Attorney King, in, it is a part of the historical record that your father, uh, on the day itself or the day after, said he regretted uh, advising Ninoy to come home. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you recall of your father's decision and advice to Ninoy at around that time? But First, let me say that the decision of Ninoy to come home mm-hmm. was not a spur-of-the-moment uh, decision. It, it was well thought of. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, a year before that, uh, 1982, mm-hmm. my father was able to visit me in New Jersey for the first time. Mm-hmm. He had a serious talk with Ninoy about mm-hmm. coming home. Mm-hmm. Ninoy was determined to come home as early as 1982. Mm-hmm. And my father advised him against it for obvious reasons, danger to his life and mm-hmm. all that. He will be more effective in New, in the United States. Mm-hmm. He will have uh, freedom of movement. While if he comes, comes home, either he's killed or he's imprisoned. Mm-hmm. Either way, he becomes useless okay. to the opposition. But he changed his mind. But he changed his mind. A few months before Ninoy came home, my cousin, Dodo Ayuya, who was close to Tony Gonzalez, mm-hmm. who became uh, Secretary of Tourism under Cory, mm-hmm. all right, wanted to talk to my dad. And they talked in the yacht of uh, Tony Gonzalez for privacy, mm-hmm. sa Manila Yacht Club. Yep. And according to my dad, Tony Gonzalez told him that Ninoy wanted his advice because this time he was really determined to come home. Mm-hmm. And the message that my dad relayed uh, to, for Ninoy was this. He has changed his mind about Ninoy's coming home. Mm-hmm. This time, he was advising Ninoy to come home for two reasons. Mm-hmm. One, nalilimutan na raw si Ninoy. Okay. And second, at that time, Daddy knew 
that the forces of the extreme left and the extreme right were becoming very dominant. Mm -hmm. And Daddy felt that the Democratic Center needed a dynamic leader like Ninoy. Mm -hmm. And for that, he says, it's about time Ninoy came home. So let's just situate that in time. So 1983, yeah. that's, Ninoy has been three years in the U.S. Yes. And it's been five years since the uh, IBP elections. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Where he and the others supposedly lost to yes. yeah. uh, Imelda and her, yeah. and her slate. Kuki, your father and Ninoy were detained in Laur in Nueva Ecija for over two years. Uh, they, um, no, 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 sorry. They were detained in Laur for about a month. That was in solitary confinement. Okay. They were both detained for, uh, well, my father was detained for a little less than two years mm -hmm. in uh, Fort Bonifacio and uh, together with Senator Aquino, then that was eventually released and Senator Aquino re remained in, in prison mm -hmm. until he ended up in hospital mm -hmm. uh, because he had suffered, uh, I think, a heart, heart attack. attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he was eventually allowed to go to the United States for medical treatment. So, Do you recall what your father's advice was? To Did, he, did your father talk about this? Uh, yes, advice, um, you know, eh? dad had called, dad had called, or they had talked. I mean, I think they had talked long distance. Mm -hmm. um, Senator Aquino asked dad, I'm, I, Pepe, I'm coming home, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And um, dad said, dad advised against his coming home. Mm -hmm. Dad felt that Senator Aquino had a, a, had a larger role to play consolidating the political opposition in the United States, the opposition in exile, mm -hmm. because uh, like the opposition here, they weren't exactly united too. <laughs> so he, he, was, um, he was urging Senator Aquino to stay in the U.S. and focus on the political opposition and to bring the stories of the Philippines to a wider audience, mm -hmm. to have a greater um, exposure of uh, what was happening in the country, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but Senator Aquino said, Pepe, I've made up my mind. I really, he really felt he needed to come home. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember what reasons he gave to dad. Mm -hmm. All I remember is dad said, he, he feels, he believes strongly that he must come home. So that, that, was, that is as far as I know. Incidentally, do you remember your father's first reaction when you rushed home from Ali Mall and you, you met, you know, with the news? Uh, do you oh, remember? Shock. And not only shock, he was already thinking, okay, what's going to happen? Uh, who did this? He was already wondering, oh, he was already saying, okay, who did this? Secondly, mm -hmm. how is the government going to respond? Mm -hmm. we, we, what should we prepare ourselves for? Mm -hmm. Is this going to be a crackdown? Is everybody else going to be killed? Okay. Is there going, you know, at that, in 1983, there was, remember, you have to also look at the economic the, the peso was falling crazily. That's right. That's right. So a, a lot of people, middle class, were now feeling the crunch of martial law. Martial law was no longer viewed as the solution to our economic goals. That's right. So you have that. And then you have the problem where, um, you, you know, how would Mar he was already thinking, how will Marcos respond? Mm -hmm. Is he going to crack down? Is he going to, uh, you know, let it go? Uh, which dad didn't think he would let it go. Yeah. I, dad thought that there, dad expected rather a crackdown. That was what he expected. That's why he pushed together with um, Senator Tanyada mm -hmm. for, the, for the formation of the opposition because he said, let's push back. Mm -hmm. We're go we expect to be pushed out, pushed, but we need to push back. So that's, that's, um, that was what was in his mind. That, that was more thinking, think uh, more, more, he had more, I, I don't know, foresight maybe. He was looking at, he was looking, analyzing the situation and figuring out what are the forces in play, mm -hmm. uh, what do we need to do, how do we protect ourselves, how do we protect the people, etc. Erin, your grandfather, the grand old man yeah. of Philippine politics, served as Ninoy's counsel in his courts martial. Mm -hmm. What was his advice to Ninoy about returning home? I think. It was a uh, uh, general consensus in 1982 that uh, Ninoy should not yet go home. Mm -hmm. And I think 
well, my grandfather was able to visit Ninoy, mm -hmm. and I think uh, at the time they were already discussing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, from from Kapepe to Set or Sok, uh, I think they they told Ninoy 1982 might be too soon. So okay. th that I think stopped Ninoy. Okay. And when my grandfather visited in 1983 and got back after that summer visit, I think it, it, summertime here, mm -hmm. that was around uh, March or April, mm -hmm. uh, that's when, when he returned and uh, told us, he just said, Decidido na. I see. Decidido na. So, so that set the motion also on what what to do, what mm -hmm. to prepare for his eventual uh, coming home. Uh, the date had not yet been set. So that also led myself and the children of the opposition mm -hmm. time to organize. Mm -hmm. you know? As a matter of fact, the day before he arrived, we, we had our own, uh, in the language of the uh, activists at that time, uh, Operation Dikit. OD. Mm -hmm. So we would silk screen posters and stick it all over uh, EDSA, mm -hmm. Aurora Boulevard, wherever we can. Uh, Plus the yellow ribbons. I yes, mean. the rib yellow ribbons. And uh, I don't know if this is known. On August 20, the day before he arrived, mm -hmm. uh, we were distributing stickers and leaflets announcing his arrival in Green Hills. Mm -hmm. Uh, the daughter of Maur Lichauko, mm -hmm. uh, Annette, sister of George, mm -hmm. and a few, because we, we split up in, in the sh shopping area of Green Hills, were seen by Jingoy. Okay. <laughs> Senator Jingoy. I don't know if Senator Jingoy will also remember this. But uh, uh, he told these people, because mm -hmm. the, the father was the mayor, mayor of San Juan, Uy, may mga nagdi-distribute. So si Annette Vichauco, mm -hmm. dinampot. Dinampot at dinala sa, sa substation sa Green Hill Small. There's okay. a substation there. Mm -hmm. uh, this was where the, near the, the theater area. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, uh, we called ang dalawang abogado kagad ng tumakbo, si Senator Joy, uh, Doy Laurel, mm -hmm. and my father. Mm -hmm. No, to find out what's happening. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, uh, si Annette was, was eventually released. Mm -hmm. no? It was not even detained overnight, but was released. Because what was the crime that she was doing? She was just distributing leaflets. Mm -hmm. So that was the thing. Now, just to add to what Cookie mentioned about the, on the night itself of the, after Ninoy was killed, um, they could not locate the body first. Secondly, uh, the, the body of Ninoy was brought to Times, I think, the day after, early in the morning, the day after. <clears throat> um, we, uh, the, the mm -hmm. grandchildren of So, mm -hmm. the, the grandchildren of Eva Kalau, mm -hmm. uh, Kame, the nephews and nieces of Ninoy, uh, got there in the afternoon, dumating na yata at the time, because mm -hmm the lines were just starting to form. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was still no order. Uh, so we were the first to act as marshals mm -hmm. in Times Street. Uh, it already went around um, Quezon Boulevard. Um, that's why McDonald's became very popular because that was the corner of Times and and, uh, Quezon. and Quezon was mm -hmm. McDonald's, so it went around there. And at the time, McDonald's was very new. <laughs> very new. So, sa dami ng tao rin na, na pumupunta, dun rin mabagasak, no? And uh, the interesting part here is that uh, later in the evening of August 22, the Fraternity Brods of Ninoy mm -hmm. approached us. Mm -hmm. and Ceylon, right? It's Ceylon. Mm -hmm. And they are the... Uh, we know Fraternity that Ninoy... Uh, President. <laughs> President Marcos. Marcos. Mm -hmm. And they were asking what they could do to help. Yeah. And since we were just a few handling the, the lines, mm -hmm. uh, they volunteered. So at least oh, that, mm -hmm. that took away the burden from us. And we could have 
uh, we could do other things, especially because uh, President Corey and family had not yet arrived. Mm -hmm. So, so I think they arrived two days after August 21. No, so of course we had to stop the line. Mm -hmm. Private moment, mm -hmm. private moment of the family with Senator Ninoy, mm -hmm. and then the further discussions by the by the family and the political opposition. Uh, what to do and where to transfer Ninoy. Mm -hmm. I think there was already um, a go signal from Santo Domingo mm -hmm. and uh, to transfer the body. And this is where I think the test was in the march from Times to, to Santo, Santo Domingo, Domingo. Yeah. <laughs> how much people would be, we be able to generate to yeah. join the march. Yeah. And there was a lot. And it was a lot. There was a lot. It, it was, was a lot. Uh, it was really yeah. big. Hundreds of Just thousands, yeah, that's right. Attorney King, uh, I wanted to ask about your father's influence on Ninoy. Uh, in, when they were in jail together, uh, he was the one who uh, led the rosary. Yes. Uh, and I think eventually that led to Ninoy returning to his faith. Mm. And I wonder whether the decision to come home, um, Ninoy was aware of the, you know, the Christian underpinnings of that. I mean, did, did you ever have a chance to talk about this with your father? What, what, what yes. did your father yeah. think about this? Yes. Uh, we, uh, even dad, myself, we were convinced that Ninoy found his God, mm -hmm. peace with his God, while in uh, detention. That's right, yeah. Uh, about the rosary, uh, Ninoy was asked to lead the rosary. Sabi niya, pero so, hindi ko memoriado yung <laughs> glorious mystery. Eh. I mean, dad, Sesenya sa na lang kita, hindi ba? <laughs> oh, first, glorious mystery, resurrection, pataas, hindi ba? Second, ascension, pataas pa rin. Mm -hmm. Third, descent of the Holy Spirit, papapa. <laughs> Fourth, assumption, papanik na naman, hindi ba? Fifth, coronation, yeah? <laughs> coronation. At kaya binasagan siya ni Ninoy ng Monsignor. That's right. And that's the famous Dear Monsignor letter that Ninoy wrote no, right, before yeah. he, was, uh, he was killed. But I am convinced, really, that Ninoy found salvation in detention. Yeah, I think it's important to note that his seven years in detention and his three years exile mm. completely changed him. Yeah. Uh, it, it's possible to argue that before that, he was like one of those brilliant young men uh, destined to take, you know, uh, succeed in Philippine politics. Yeah. But just like many others, but uh, I think his years in detention purified him uh, and the exile actually made him, I think, uh, long for home, <laughs> uh, return home. Cookie, um, I, I cannot, you know, the image of uh, your father and uh, Ninoy uh, sharing, being in solitary confinement together, I mean, that sounds like a... An oxymoron, but yeah, they're in solitary confinement, but in you know in a, in in the same uh, detention area. Parang, the, the way I see it is like Marcos put his two most formidable enemies together yeah. to see if they would they would crack. And then you know there there are these stories, right? They would let tell each other, let each other know that they still were alive by singing. Uh, somebody one would sing the national anthem, the other would uh, sing Bayan Ko. Um, First, I'd like to ask you, what are your memories of visiting your dad uh, when he was in detention? And then secondly, did your father talk about this? I mean, this, this kind of yeah. moment? <laughs> okay, uh, memories. It was difficult. Um, I, I was quite young when, when dad was uh, arrested and detained. We, um, we had to have our photographs taken with our nameplates in front like we were common criminals. Mm -hmm. uh, we had ident we were given ID cards with those photographs. If you didn't have that you couldn't visit. Mm -hmm. We were um, brought we were made to ride a, a really rickety fiera from the camp <laughs> headquarters to their to the visiting area. 
And when we get to the visiting area, we were uh, body searched um, by, we women were body searched by wax, mm -hmm. uh, women auxiliary core, okay? Mm -hmm. The problem is the, the, the body search was very, very invasive. Hindi lang yung simple cup cup, as in, hinihipuan talaga kami. Uh, ganun, ganun. Even my, my, my mother, my father's, my grandmother, my father's aunt, who actually raised my father as a mm -hmm. child, she was in her late 80s, 90s. Uh, they, they made her, she, you know, she, she always wore a long skirt to the ground. They made her raise her, her skirt and they made her pull down her panties. Wow. That's and then um, we were made to enter a, uh, a, a a small visiting area, which had a uh, CCTV that was you know wow. uh, <laughs> for, for, uh, for focused on us. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, there was a guard, uh, a, a, a soldier who was sitting there. Mm -hmm. And then um, when, my, okay, my parents really spoke Spanish to each other, especially when they didn't want us to understand <laughs> what they were saying. Okay, although they made us study Spanish, I, I'm not very good. <laughs> my old things are great, me, you know. Anyway, uh, when we, you know, when, when we would visit, dad and mom would uh, speak in Spanish and the guard would say, no Spanish, no Spanish, English and Tagalog only. <laughs> so... So that they couldn't speak. Now, what we did, we girls, uh, we sisters, we were um, members of the choir. So we would bring a guitar and we would sing with the guitar while my parents were, you know, talking to each other. Now, there was a little bathroom attached to the uh, visiting area. And there was a huge hole in the bathroom. So every time you needed to use the bathroom, mm -hmm. there was a soldier or two or three who literally put their faces through that hole to look and see what you were doing. Um, they, it was designed it, to uh, discourage you from coming back. <laughs> definitely. I mean, okay, wow. now, visiting in La Ur, huh, that was another story. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, Dad and uh, Senator Aquino were transferred to La Ur by a helicopter. Dad and Senator Aquino were um, handcuffed to each other, and then they were handcuffed to the seats of the helicopter. My father objected. He told the soldiers, don't, don't hand up, handcuff us to the seat. Pag bumagsak itong airplan, patay kami. We have no chance, no hope of um, escape. Ay, hindi naman sila pinansin or pinakinggan. Pinabayaan lang gano, no? In the meantime, one day, uh, a, a six by six truck comes to the house and delivers all of my father's things, including his eyeglasses. And my, my father used to carry a rosary all the time mm -hmm. and his rosary. And uh, they just dumped it in the house as if to say, wala na yung, wala na siya. Oh. Patay. Parang ganun yung message eh. Patay na siya, wala na siya. Uh, my mother was furious. Mm -hmm. So she made two of my sisters go outside and make an inventory which took the entire day. She did not allow the military to leave. You stay there until the inventory is there, is done. Mm -hmm. So that was what she did. And then she called up Tita Cori, uh, Mrs. Aquino, and asked her, um, did you receive, no, ganon den. No, did this happen to you? And she said, yes. Now, the only reason we were allowed to visit La Ur was because of a Supreme Court, uh, yes, Court yes. decision, uh, ruling mm -hmm. that allowed us to visit. Mm -hmm. And when we went, and remember the camp said, the soldiers had refused to tell us where our fathers were. Mm -hmm. they, they, they said no. I mean, so I mean, I have a whole long story about that. Maybe <laughs> I'm taking up too much of your time. So. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's a story that uh, that's really worth uh, resharing, especially uh, at this juncture in our history. Uh, Erin, your grandfather featured in many iconic photos. I remember two in particular. One was uh, he was being water uh, cannon yes. together with Chino Rosses and the others, yes. right? And the other was he was in either a Ford. He had been arrested and he was in a, 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 either a Ford Fiera yeah. or a Toyota Tamara and yeah. he stuck his head out and shook his fist. Yes. Yeah. What was it like living with uh, a Lolo like that? <laughs> well, uh, Frustrating for us, the, <laughs> for Tatay, the, the children, mm -hmm. because Lolo would not give the exact details where he would be going. Uh, 
Okay. Siyempre, he was already, Lolo was already 80 at the time that he was arrested. Mm -hmm. And uh, the children, of course, were concerned about safety, his health. Right. So after the, the elections of April 7, 1978, we knew that there was going to be a march on April 9. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tatay asked uh, Lolo, uh, San tayo magkikita? So Lolo told us that uh, we'd see each other in Manila Cathedral. Okay. Let's meet each other there where, the, where the, there will be a mass. Okay. So we've been wait, we're waiting in Manila Cathedral, and then a foreign uh, uh, media personality came mm -hmm. and informed us, did you hear that there were students arrested at Welcome Rotonda? <laughs> so we were wa wondering where Lola was, wala pa. So we decided to proceed to, to Welcome Rotonda, and uh, we just caught the tail end of the students being put into Metro Manila buses. Okay. Where, uh, tinanong namin nasaan yung mga sino mga kasama din yung mm -hmm. nagmarcha siya mm -hmm. o binanggit na si Senator Tanyada Senator Rodrigo uh, Gingona Joker Arroyo ano nangyari sa kanila ay sinakay ho sila sa fiera at hindi namin alam kung saan dinala kasi yung mga estudyante dinala sa Bikutan mm -hmm. I think yung mga personalities dina, dinala muna sa krame mm -hmm. kasama si <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was there I was there and I was uh, inside that fiera when the senator made that I, is that right yeah. uh, <laughs> so, and, let me add uh, an oh. anecdote ano mm -hmm. nung nakabilanggo na kami mm -hmm. after about 7 days the mga siguro alas 6 ng gabi mm -hmm. binuksan yung steel gate ang nasa second floor kami four cells facing each other and a steel gate so, naka-isolation cells kami lahat. So, that steel gate opened, leading to our cells. E, pumasok na mga sundalo. Binuksan yung selda ni Senator Tanyada. Dinig na dinig namin, sabi ni Senator Tanyada. Bakit? Sabi niya, bakit? Pawawala na ho kayo. Dahil sa edad, ganyan. He objected <laughs> to being released. Sabi niya, bakit ako lang? Di ba? Mm -hmm. Hindi ako sasama kung hindi pa wawalan lahat itong kasama. Anyway, he was forced to go. Alam mo ba, the next day he was there visiting us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 So Napakatapang. He, he was playing hide and seek, not only with the Metrocom, but also with the family. <laughs> uh, what, what, a, what a legend. I mean, these were the, you know, mm. so really they were heroes of the anti-dictatorship struggle. Uh, and I think that's a necessary... Uh, part of the context no? for understanding uh, Ninoy's role. No? Yes. He wasn't coming home as the lone opposition figure. I mean, he had all these friends, close friends, as he said, tested friends uh, and valued mentors uh, who were there. No? Um, maybe we can spend a, a couple of minutes on the funeral. No? I'd like to know what did your father, your grandfather, and uh, Cookie, your Father, after, you know, after we saw, I mean, I don't think anyone was prepared for the scale. Yeah. No, I mean, I was there, at least two million pe people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The uh, funeral procession lasted the entire day. Entire day. People uh, stuck uh, to the procession, even though it rained. It rained hard. And lightning yeah. killed one in the, in the uh, infamous headline of the Times Journal. No? <laughs> lightning kills one uh, in, in that thunderstorm yeah. in Luneta. And I think when that happened, I think we all realized, wow, you know, this is different, right? This is different. I'd like to know, uh, do you recall what your own father or grandfather thought, uh, uh, what, what that meant, what that funeral meant? Well, ako wala dito, no? so hindi ko talaga natikman yung flavor mm -hmm. of what happened. No? And I would not like to speculate okay. on how daddy reacted to it. So... But Erin was there. Uh, I was there. I attended the Mass. Um, but I did not join my grandfather and my father mm -hmm. in the van uh, that had uh, President Corey and the mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 I, my grandfather just was 
sur- really surprised at the amount of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sabi niya, iba na ito. Mm-hmm. No? And of course, there are anec- anecdotes uh, in the coaster going to Manila Memorial. Mm-hmm. As uh, we men know when we're aging, uh, they have to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And it was very hard for Lolo to keep, 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 keep it for such a long period of time from mm-hmm. Santo Domingo all the way to Manila Memorial. And so whenever he had to go, uh, they would just say, oops, <laughs> si Sir, the, the coaster would stop. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, sa bagal ng movement rin ng flatbed truck, mm-hmm. madali naman humabol rin yung mm-hmm. coaster. No? But Lola didn't go out that far. He just went down the door and, <laughs> <laughs> and went back inside because he didn't want to keep the family waiting all this, this is part of the logistics that nobody talks about. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but... But I think uh, uh, that the, the the iconic picture of uh, the four, mm-hmm. I think, uh, Nina Yakino, Makling Dulag, uh, Edgar Hobson, mm-hmm. uh, and um, uh, Bobby Ed, Bobby De La Paz. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, uh, justice for Aquino, justice for all yeah. came out yeah. on that day, and so that led to the formation and later on to the big rally in September twenty. One nineteen eighty-three. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Cookie, uh, what was your own father's uh, assessment after the funeral? I think it, it gave him hope. It gave him hope that there was a, a chance for this country to find itself free. Yeah. That people were willing to come out, if people were, were not no longer afraid, if the fear, kung sa nabasag na yung, yung, yung um, fear of everyone, and finally, so it, it he felt really bad mm-hmm. that Senator Aquino was yeah. killed and assassinated in that way. Mm-hmm. But he also felt Senator Aquino's death brought us hope. And that was what he preferred to cling to the hope of a better, brighter, free Philippines. Yeah, there's, there's a rough, roughly a thousand days between August 21, 1983 and February 25, 1986. Mm. Um, yeah. Time for my last question. Uh, this is such a fascinating discussion, but uh, it, we're running long. So mm. I, I'd like to start with, I'd like to ask you all the same question, but I'll start with Cookie first and then Erin and end with Attorney King. What is something that you know for a fact in your own family traditions, which is not yet common knowledge, something that uh, might, might benefit uh, Filipinos uh, knowing it? Cookie first. Okay, um, what I know for a fact, because I have a copy of it, uh-huh, <laughs> is the, um, remember the 1973 Constitution? Mm-hmm. The, the, there is the, there, I have a copy of the telegram sent by uh, Marcos to the different barangay heads, village heads, um, telling them to pass the 1973 Constitution. So that whole story of, um, you know, Viva Voce, uh, you know, the, the whole... Yeah, raising how, your hands. How, how the Constitution was passed, the martial law Constitution was passed, was really a make-up, made-up, made-up uh, story um, based on that specific document, a copy of the actual document I actually had. Wow. So... Thank you. Erin? Well, um, uh, I don't know. It's not that well known that Lolo prosecuted the father of Setor Nino Yakino. Mm-hmm. And uh, for supposedly um, collaborating with the collaborating Japanese. With the Japanese. Yeah. And uh, during that time, uh, well, the hearing ended, and then uh, there was talk about uh, granting amnesty. Mm-hmm. Lolo, Lolo finally resigned as a special prosecutor. Mm-hmm. Eventually, um, sent, uh, uh, President Rojas asked him to run mm-hmm. 
for the Senate in 1947. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the campaign, uh, I think it, it was Senator Ninoy, this, this was told to be by Senator Butch. Mm -hmm. Senator Ninoy asked the father, why are you campaigning for Senator Tanyada? He was prosecuting you mm -hmm. in the collaboration case. According to, to Senator Ninoy, uh, the father said that um, we need people like Senator Tanyada because he cannot be bought. No, even if his friends are being prosecuted, mm -hmm. he would stand by the law. So the father of uh, Senator Ninoy never got to see uh, Lolo winning because he mm -hmm. died before mm -hmm. the elections. So this was a story that, that uh, Dr. Senator Ninoy and Senator Butch shared with. Um, I, I, I do remember an interview with uh, Senator uh, Boots Aquino, uh, who said that his brother's driving ambition was to rehabilitate their name. Uh, he, 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 he admitted that, uh, that you know, the collaborationist uh, taint, uh, uh, taint against, uh, I think he was speaker <laughs> during yes. the Puppet Republic, Benigno yes. Aquino Sr., uh, was what drove Ninoy to, uh, to politics. And then... The world is round. <laughs> and then he became the lawyer of Senator Ninoy. Yes. That's right. <laughs> yes. That's At right. the end of the day. And Attorney King. Yes. Uh, I'd like to tell everybody that during the tenure of Daddy as a senator, he was a senator for 12 years, pinagbawalan mm -hmm. kahit uh, isa sa amin ang tumakbo. Not while he was a senator. Mm -hmm. Kaya wala sa amin siguro nobody developed a taste for it. Politics. Mm -hmm. My brother Boogie once filed a certificate of candidacy here in Quezon City. Mm -hmm. yeah. But my father told him, no, not while I'm a senator. Iatras mo yan. The same is true with Senator Tanyada. Not mm -hmm. one of them. Mm -hmm. Not one of his children ran during his tenure. That's right. And he was senator for... 24 years. 24 years. 24 years. The longest uh, Joke time. no. Also, none of his children. Pilaes, Maglakos, Manahan, kahit isa dyan, walang anak o apo o asawa na tumakbo during their tenure. Dahil ayaw nilang gamitin yung kanilang position to give undue advantage. Mm -hmm to relatives and members of the family. Eh, ngayon parang pinamamana ang pwesto. Yeah. It yeah. is bequeathed. Yeah, it is a family business. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, C Cookie Jokno, King Rodrigo, Erin Tanihada. This has been an illuminating conversation. I am glad that we can add your family lore to the deposit of publicly available information. In the same way that, for instance, stories from the Rizal family have helped inform our history. This is one way we can help create a more robust public square. Again, many thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for us tonight. But for a country that's still, still struggling with its history, the work never ends. As always, the next step for engaged citizens is to take a more active part in rebuilding our democracy. See you in the public square. This is John Neri. Thank you and good night.